uh, take you through the newspapers this morning, share with you the big stories, making headlines across uh, the country. We're going to be starting on the Punch newspapers this morning. Big story there says, Forex crisis, Labour blames government officials, meets federal government today. And also politicians, states for foreign goods pushing Nigeria to disaster, says the NLC. And that's mostly, uh, of course, you know, I think the biggest um, uh, story in that regard is the uh, Nigerian um, um, House of Rep members uh, getting themselves 160 millionaire SUVs. They were criticized for that. And of course, you know, reminded that they are made in Nigeria SUVs that they could use. But they chose, you know, to, of course, spend Nigeria's taxpayers' money. And also, Labour threatens to boycott talks with government if minister attends. Um, also on the point this morning, federal government seeks speedy delivery of Turkish attack helicopters. Afri Exim, Fidelity Bank, uh, John Vance, seal $40 million COCO deal. And also, challenging PNID fraud, save Nigeria $15 billion. Uh, the former President Mohamed Buhari put out a tweet yesterday that didn't get the reaction that, you know, he probably was expecting on social media um it, it, every now and then you know the the muhammad Buhari account still tweets um but of course you know still it's exes, met with the, it, it does exist you know but you know exes, you, exes. Or still or still x's rather <laughs> still posts on x um <laughs> yeah and it, it did come with a lot of criticism you know from nigerians of course who reacted to it but yes you know it's one of the things that was stated uh, concerning the pnid deal uh, that it saved Nigeria $15 billion. For, that's from the former president, uh, Mohamed Buhari. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visits Tinubu, gives ECOWAS 81 million euros for security and others. And also Lagos begins demolition of ECOE structures near drainage. Importers return to parallel market as Naira rebounds. We did see this over the weekend from uh, hitting almost 1,300 Naira. The Naira, you know, I think fell down 1, back to 1,100 something. plus. Um, uh, those were uh, some of the things that uh, we saw over the weekend. So everyone is, you know, really just still, you know, asking you know, what's going on. Fingers crossed. Will it continue to, you know, rebound? Will the Naira continue to gain value or not? And also another question that, you know, I think people need to, you know, I did see people ask is, how does this happen? Where, you know, in one day it's 1,200, mm. the next day is 1,000, you know, 150, like without anything in particular that you're seeing as steps that have been taken by government or by market forces or what, you know, ever you want to describe it as, you know, it almost feels like it's, it's, it's magic the way the Naira appreciates or depreciates. Financial. So what is the thing? Exactly. So what is the thing that the government has done that has triggered the Naira to gain value? In any way, shape, or form, you know, nobody, nobody can really explain it. We just hear that it's reduced. But well, it's, it's largely yeah. dependent on, you know, the. I think it's the I and E market, of course. It would be nice to see exactly what policies the government has in place to ensure that in the coming months we can it revert continues. to what it was. I, and I honestly, because there are people who are waiting with bated breaths, waiting for the point where to go back to five hundred. I mean, who could have imagined that five hundred and seven hundred would have been gold? Would who genuinely treasure the Naira exchange in that yeah. rate. We're hoping that it goes back there. Because typically what we see in Nigeria is what goes up never comes down. So we're hoping that it gets back there so that there can be some sense of normalcy. Not very likely, but, but we'll please, see. Please, please, it has to be likely. Not very likely. Final story this morning. Israel Hamas deaths near 10,000 UN warns of civil unrest. And uh, when the story is told like that, it almost feels like they had malaria or there's a plague. No, it's not. It is 10,000 people that have been murdered by, you know, one country. That's really what it is. They have been bombed uh, um, um, in their sleep day and night. And this includes thousands of children, thousands of women and thousands of men that have been murdered by Israel. It shouldn't be told any way, in, in any other way. Um, and another thing is, no, these are not 10,000 Hamas members. If you want to claim that, oh, Hamas attacked Israel on the 7th of October, and so Israel is fighting back in the No, this is not, you know, 10,000 Hamas members, or 3 or, or 11 or 20 of them. No, this is 10,000 um, Palestinian lives that have been wasted while the, the world just watches like it is, you know, business as usual. Um, just, you know, to always make sure that I'm stating exactly what the situation is over there. That's all we have on the punch. All right. Uh, now let's move over to the Daily Independent newspaper. On the front page of the Daily Independent, the big story there says, fresh CBN Forex market push on settled speculators and banks. We did talk about this a few minutes ago. Boat capsizes with 100 passengers in Taraba on page 7. 
that's not a good look that's not a, a good story we don't know exactly what the details are as to why this hundred passengers capsized uh, I, i'm hoping that there haven't been any casualties in this story buhari lists what nigeria would have lost in the pnid 11 billion dollars case on page 29 catholic priests and four others abducted in taraba on page six we still of course must remember that we have conversations about um unknown gunmen bandits and kidnappers and kidnapping seems to have become a very interesting trade for a number of people it seems that our our fight against insecurity has navigated several realms just when we thought we were getting a hang of the boko haram bombings which were very frequent during the jonathan good luck jonathan uh, tenure we did see that it was a lot more frequent and over time we started feeling like okay we're making gains and whilst we whilst, whilst we started to see that we're making gains against boko haram we then started to see the terrorism struggles evolving. It's almost like when you're trying to get the handle of one, they're mm. devising new means. And now kidnapping is the order of the day. And that's really very sad. Uh, the way out of this is what I don't know yet. How we can get a handle on kidnapping and, you know, abductions. And because, I mean, that's not a good enough excuse. Poverty is the one problem. And there are other people who just want to make the country ungovernable, who want to show you that, you know, this country is, is totally ungovernable. But, yeah, I, but ta tackling crime, tackling, and, and so like you said, poverty is one angle to it. But I feel like uh, tackling crime, you know, the fight against poverty must be included with, you know, tackling crime. Because right. if you have, you know, millions of people who are jobless, and it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing in a just, negative way. I, did, I think I saw, you know, an, a post on X um, a few days ago that says that um, we might be looking at, you know, other parts of the world and saying that, Oh, you know, they, they are living on a ticking time bomb, you know, and forgetting that what we're currently dealing with in Nigeria is something similar, even worse, because we have more of those, we have, you know, a higher number of unemployed people who are waking up every day with no plan whatsoever um, and praying one day that the bu bubble would burst so that they can, in some way, shape or form, steal and grab whatever they can to feed. Um, there's a lot of frustration People would be easily cajoled into joining criminal gangs, into terror organizations in every part of the country. The moral compass is being tilted in the negative. We're seeing because a there, of, there's poverty. People are desperate. People yeah. are poor. And uh, it would seem that our values have started to decline. Maybe that, that now necess necessitates the position of the of uh, fellow director, you know, in terms of... No, sure. absolutely not. Um, but, okay. but also to mention that we haven't also seen policing improve in the last decade. We have not seen better in investments in uh, police infrastructure, security infrastructure generally. We've not seen a change in the attitude and in, in the way that policing is done in Nigeria. So you wouldn't expect that things would get better. Terror organizations and criminals would always change and adjust. Yes, we still, they, they used to be they bombings. They evolve, yes. Yes, they used to be bombings in you know, the late 2009, 2010, that era. Um, eventually moved away from bombings into just, you know, spreading out of these terror groups, having different names, different um, um, attacking and villages yes. um, and all of that. Then we moved into kidnapping. So it's, um, but we've not seen policing itself improve. But yet again, the conversation about state policing is something that we still keep talking, community policing, state policing. But I don't know if that's a conversation that would ever find an answer to. Still on the front page this morning of the Daily Independent newspaper, Tinubu Abbas Ganduje Mon Uhinoi of Ebira Land. Akbabio Kalu lead delegation to brief Tinubu on IPU assembly outcome. Thousands raid Gaza, aid warehouses, Israel widens ground offensive on page six. And we also have here on the front page, Nigeria crawling. But we're changing the narrative, Tinubu tells German Chancellor. How? How are we changing this narrative? It will be very interesting and very important for the uh, president to share with us the measures and the, the timelines for this measures to Im to be implemented for us to see a change in the narrative it's not just the narrative we want to see an actual change of what it is it says um, it's regrettable how many from nigeria end up in other countries and that's of course according to shows two more stories nlc to embark on strike street protests in emu on the first of november states why it may shun federal government meeting to review subsidy agreements the final story serap tasks INEC on reforms Secure Nigerians' voting rights. That's what we have on the Daily Independent. All right. Um, we're going to move to our next newspaper now, which is The Guardian. And I, I would also just want, once again mention, um, and I'm, I, I apologize because I would never just let these things go. Uh, the, the point where, or the my view that there's a way that the world's opinions have been shaped 
into almost not seeing value in the lives of a certain type of people. Uh, Yemen, for example, has had the worst humanitarian crisis in human history. Um, it almost didn't matter, you know, the lives that were being lost in Yemen all these years. Um, it's currently going on in Palestine. It has happened in Sudan, where we talked about the crisis in Sudan, and it didn't seem to matter. When thousands of lives are lost, you know, in weeks or months of, of war crimes, N nobody seems to matter because they are not the right skin tone for people to care about, that thousands of lives are being lost. It's currently going on in Gaza. It did happen in Yemen um, until, you know, they somehow were able to find some ceasefire. Um, and I feel it's unfair that, you know, these, the world's opinion has been shaped into us not caring about these people as human beings. It's unfortunate right. and very sad. Let's go to the Guardian newspapers this morning, um, see what we can find in the time that we have uh, left here. It says here, why probe of uh, 11.3 trillion naira refineries maintenance cost will end futile. I think everyone we also expects that. We had this conversation last that. week yes. as well on the show. As on page six, uh, we might also be talking about it this morning in the uh, in, uh, top stories. Also, unconstitu unconstitutional for politicians to be INEC REC. Osho APC and PDP bicker over Adelike's 100 billion naira infrastructural agenda. Energy challenges undermining Nigeria's development, Tinubu admits. And also, the imperative of a good road infrastructure. Also, PNID, importance of following legal processes in a uh, uh, dispute resolution, that's from former President Muhammad Buhari. APC risks losing future polls with questionable candidates, says Don. I totally do not agree with this. If anything, the 2023 elections have shown Nigerians is that no matter how questionable in big, bold capital letters painted with red blood um, your character is, you can still p win elections in Nigeria. Um, and that's what I've seen in the last, at least in the last elections. Um, and of course, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that uh, former minister Rotimi Amichi was saying, that there's no a politician that has told you he doesn't have um, certificates. There's no politician that has told you he has not committed a crime before, but Nigerians, you know, will still go ahead and vote them. And that's exactly what the reality is in Nigeria. And I, I wouldn't say that Nigerians they didn't try in the last elections. Yes, they did. They, they gave their best, I believe. But the forces were stronger. Um, there's forces maybe, the maybe system, not. Maybe. No, right. but I, there's also the part where... Um, maybe that's exactly what Nigerians voted um, in the last election. That's what I next well, says. That's they say the that the people have also. the government that they deserve, right? No, no, I'm just saying, I mean, INEC and the Supreme Court have declared that that's what Nigerians voted. And we can argue against that because that's what the Supreme Court has declared. So we'll leave it that way. Right. Anyway, let's uh, go on a very quick break. And when we come back, we'll be looking into our top stories this morning on Breakfast Central. <laughs> 